Guys, we did it. We hit 10K. Thank you for this amazing journey so far. These last two years have been the proudest of my life, and I could not love this little community we built together more. And 10K, you know what that means. It's finally time to do what's the best Grimlock. Unfortunately, it will not be this week, and it won't be next week, and it probably won't be the week after that. I really wish it would, but unfortunately, just for starters, the What's the Best Grimlock will be the biggest video I've ever made up to this point, guaranteed. I've obviously not started it yet, but I very readily see it turning out upwards of 30 minutes, so just on the creation front alone, I will need extra time. Unfortunately, that's not the only problem, though. See, I'm waiting on one last Grimlock that's trapped in shipping. I wanted to make this What's the Best the most complete and perfect it can be, and when I went to buy this Grimlock several months ago, it literally sold out in the few hours between when I added it to my shopping cart and when I went to actually pay for it, as I didn't finish the checkout till later that night. I pre-ordered the second run because I figured it would be out by now, but nope. When I realized I was going to hit the 10k milestone by the end of the month, I just went on eBay and paid extra to get one of the first run copies. Unfortunately after that, the subscriber growth accelerated and we hit this even sooner. So now it's currently in molasses shipping and won't arrive till sometime early December. Should've just bought this when I hit 9k, but hindsight is 2020. So, in order to make the best, most perfect version of this milestone video, I will probably have to wait until I'm almost halfway to 11,000 for it to come out. I wish it could be sooner, but just bear with me for a few weeks. Anyways, for the content of this video, how is it so much easier to get Wave 3 of Legacy than it was to get Wave 2? Wave 3 just came out, and through a few different stores and a small amount of help from my fans, I already have most of it. I think I'm missing two figures total, I only just finished the second wave, and I actually got my first Wave 3 figure before I got my last Wave 2 one. So let's look at my initial exposure to the final wave of Legacy. It's Crankcase. Ah, uh, another scavenger down. I think this leaves Fulcrum, and I'll finally have gotten a complete set. Not that this looks a ton like the IDW Crankcase. His chest is hilariously enough too detailed, too colorful, and the figure is overall too wide. Plus, it has a backpack much larger than that version did. So as a representation of that version of this character, this is a flawed one, but not an ugly one. This is far more trying to be a G1 version, which I don't quite understand why. Crankcase really has only ever been a prominent and loved character in IDW, so a G1 version really only appeals to the few people who were still buying toys back when G1 really started to wane. So basically few. I'm not trying to disparage this thing, this actually looks pretty cool. I'm happy to have it, I'm just saying that I think there was a better choice to be made. Though to be fair, they could have done it this way simply because this is the more visually interesting design. As much as I love the IDW Crankcase, he is rather plain in the chest. You can actually put the vehicle bumper here for an alternate look, and while not a particularly accurate to IDW one, it still looks decent. If you want to take this even further, you can rotate the shoulders out at the side to alter this thing's appearance even more. Not super useful, but I can see some customizers using this to troop build some Genericon variations. I'm a bit confused as to why this has the split wheels of the skids. This particular design does not require that at all like the original did, so it stands out as extra weird here. And with this thing, I am definitely finding that we are running into our old enemy QC. While nothing on this is as bad as the arm on skids ripping right off, this retool feels pretty bad in all areas, and doesn't hold together great. It's bad here, but when getting into vehicle mode, it's even worse, with parts loving to pop off every two seconds. I think most frustrating in this mode is the fact that the chest just comes up any time I move the arms, and then the fronts of his shins fall off with like no provocation. One thing I'm very relieved to see is that he actually has his back cannons. For a lot of the development of this figure, we were getting told that he was just going to get some sculpted detail in his backpack that was going to try to pretend to care to almost maybe slightly look a little like his back cannons. But no, instead he actually has some real moving parts back here to be them. Unfortunately, these are horribly anemic, and they don't look very good, but it's better than what we thought we were going to get. Though, I'm seriously getting sick of stuff not being Blast Effect compatible. Both his guns are, so why aren't these? Seriously, it needs to be mandated from the top that if it fires, then it gets blast pegs. I'm happy to say that this is a heavier than average retool, so this does manage to look and feel a lot different than the skids. Hell, this even manages to have a more different transformation than a lot of figures people insist to me aren't retools, but totally are do. And yet, even Hasbro calls this a retool, so I'm 100% vindicated in my claims and I shall never be corrected again. That's how that works, right? Head is both good and dumb as hell. It looks pretty cool, I can't tell if the blue around the goggles is intentional or lazy, but it does help his eyes stand out from his face. And I feel like the extra grumpy expression has to be a pull from the comics, which appeals to me. Though, what would appeal to me even more is if he had a blaster wound to the teddy bear ear. This boy should be missing part of his brain. What's dumb as hell though is that while the plate on the backs of the heads has been a frustration on all the versions of this figure, here it is absolutely at its worst. It is easily half the overall length of his head taller than his head. And I sincerely don't understand why this one is so much bigger than the others. Their heads are about the same size, so why is this one so much longer? So the look of this figure is pretty good. It's not the version of the character that almost 100% of the people who want this guy care about, but it's not a bad looking version, and it's not not that guy. Like how if you want a G1 RC, then the Prime version isn't going to scratch that itch. And you know what I mean, don't even that is a G1 and fight RC at me. You know that's not what I mean when I say G1 RC. Anyways, the accessories this guy comes with aren't great. He gets Skid's automatic icing squeezer, this time in clear plastic, and I'm not sure why. It actually made me check the original one of these to see if they're maybe on the same sprue as the roof of the car, but no dice, that's opaque plastic. So I don't know why they gave him this particular lame gun. He also comes with this boombox of death! 
which has a panel along the side that folds out so it can maybe kind of slightly look like a gun. The biggest problem I have with this is that the backside is so horribly hollow. Like, I am already having to use my imagination with this, and you guys were so lazy, you just kneecapped my ability to do that. So yeah, these aren't great. One of the guns is lame no matter what, and it's even lamer in clear plastic, and the other one is lame no matter what, but kind of a fun lame if it weren't for them phoning in the backside. Posability is actually a bit different than this kid's. Head is a little more than average tilt up and to the side. He's got the sin that is hot rod shoulders and no ability to cheat for more because of it. Normal 90 elbows, wrist swivel, legs are a little impeded back and to the side, but forward seems to have consumed all the missing motion from the other two directions. Normal 90 knees and an ankle tilt. So while not bad on the posing, it's also still kind of a negative feature. The head gives it a little more expression than typical, but the otherwise dead average posing is really damaged by the hot rod shoulders. If the whole thing was better than this, it would just be a slightly disappointing piece of articulation. But as it is, it's all not impressive with one really flawed joint type thrown in. The transformation is actually a reasonable amount different than the skids. It's a little more finicky due to the really bad tolerances of the figures, so stuff like the doors really wants to fall off, and the shoulder cannons have to be in the right place or you can't complete it, plus the rear tires don't lock in at all, and it has parts forming, though it's completely optional, and if you lose that part, it doesn't look all that incomplete without it. His bare chest does look enough like the grill of a car. And the all-mode is one of those ugly shoebox-looking cars that I hate, but this one, I'm kinda cool with. The reshelling has really changed up the design of this alt mode, and the new colors makes it a little badass. Plus, I really like the little details they've picked out, like the weird rear panel thing back here that I swear belongs on a 90s paper cup. I don't know what that's supposed to look like, but it's cool, and it's not typical that you see an asymmetrical alt mode. This is a funny little thing, because it is absolutely only a streetcar, but details like the canisters along the sides, the really aggressive bumper with the heavy-duty lights, and the winch really implies that this is desperately cosplaying as some kind of off-road vehicle. The Off-Road Media Cube. What a crime against taste. The Media Cube was one of the ugliest vehicles of all time. Fight me. My biggest negative with this thing is that unlike its brethren, for some reason the alt mode just gave itself a flaw for, like, no reason other than to just have one, as now it's got this big gap at the center of its hood up by its windshield. My only guess is that it helps with the range of movement on the head, though it does have a positively gorgeous Decepticon symbol painted on top of it. Rolls just fine, no problems there, so it's a good alt mode, probably better than the robot mode. And overall, I'd have to say that so far, this wave is off to a shaky start. I mean, seriously, we are only at Wave 3, and there have already been three retools of this particular figure, with a fourth one all but guaranteed. And this one, while for sure the most interesting and the most unique, is also the most flawed. Really bad QC and some baffling decisions in the design phase hurt this guy a good amount. The shoulders suck, the figure wanting to fall apart is a pain, the cannons are lame, the accessories are lamer, but fun to the right mindset. Well, one of them is, though it's just too bad that he doesn't have the wrists to let him hold it on his shoulder like a boombox. But it looks pretty good, the transformation isn't bad, just hampered, and the alt mode for the most part rocks. I mean, it's a silly nonsensical thing, but sometimes those are the most fun. And this does overall fit the character, plus, with the for the most part dynamite head sculpt, this does have probably more positives than it does negatives. It's just too bad that it's got so much holding it back, because at the very least, without the tolerance issues, this would have been a lot better. I don't see this being anyone's favorite figure if they have more than just this guy. I don't even see it making someone's top 10 of this year, from this line. It is decent, however. You aren't getting ripped off, and you probably won't hate it, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. It's not my job to sell you Hasbro stuff, it has to sell itself. And this doesn't make a great case for it. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.